So with that being said, I'd like to make an introduction. So we have Dr. William Kelly with us here today to ask him to come down. Dr. Kelly is a pulmonologist, and he is going to be our content expert for the pulmonary portion of the module, much like Dr. Hagney was for the cardiovascular portion. Should note that uh, Dr. Kelly uh, was the original uh, CPR module director three years ago, and so a lot of the features of the module uh, were originated by Dr. Kelly and Dr. O'Neill when the uh, conversion to the new curriculum occurred. So you can direct all your complaints to Dr. Kelly. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Brian. And thanks for giving me just a few minutes to add my welcome to you as you start pulmonary. I think it's appropriate that the lungs are central to your module because they're so important and because a couple other things. Uh, in the next couple of days, we're going to cover how you oxygenate your blood, which your heart serves to distribute through the body. And not much else. And then your kidneys, you're going to get a preview of how the lungs do a lot of the heavy lifting for your kidneys in terms of your acid balance uh, in your body. You're going to learn a lot of stuff, but before we do that, I just want you to sit back before we break and just savor the wonder of the lungs. Gorgeous to look at, genius in design, elegant in simplicity, which means the test is going to be easy. Simple. Uh, I know you know these numbers, so just review them with me, uh, with me here. If you took your lungs and switched them on the floor, I don't recommend you do this, but you switch them on the floor, what's the surface area? 10 square meters? No? 10 square That's it. 70 to 100 square meters, 10 square. Those 300 to 600 million alveoli have a great surface area that's needed. Okay. Another question, trade in, divides the left and right lung, divides again, divides again. <clears throat> How many feet of airway do you have inside there? 1,200 feet? I don't know, it's really long. But actually, I do know. <laughs> Some say 1,500 miles. It's at least 50 miles, with different references, but miles and miles. And I put this here to remind me, you have a Coke can? How many of those Coke can size worth of air do your lungs move in a day? And you know the trend, it's a big number. Any guesses? A thousand? Thirty-one thousand. Seven to eleven thousand liters a day, six million liters a year. And all it's an unsung hero doing it mostly automatically. Although you do have some volitional control, right? It's hard to control your heart rate. You can't stop yourself from making pee, but you can't speed up your breathing or pause your breathing. And that adds a layer of interest and complexity. Um, let's see, there's something else I wanted to... Oh, but you can live that along, right? Yeah. Or can you? Yeah. Absolutely. You take out the left lung, in this case for cancer, the heart moves over, the lung expands to fill the space, and you're fine. Or you get a new lung. This is cross-sectional anatomy, CAT scan, heart, left lung, Scar beyond uh, repair due to pulmonary fibrosis and a relatively good transplant lung over here. Can you live without both lungs? Now, now kidney guys have dialysis. Heart guys have ventricular assist devices. Yeah? You know, there is extracorporeal membrane oxygenation ECMO. The real pictures are bloody and gross, and that's why I had to show you a diagram. It doesn't work very well, but there is a, a temporary option if you need it. Because you have to take care of your lungs, and you have to study hard over the next couple of weeks to really learn all this stuff. Because um, lung disease not only kills people, but it robs them of their uh, lives. You know, having to cart around an oxygen tank, having to think 12 to 15 times a minute where your next breath is coming from. I mean, if you're thinking about your next breath, you can't enjoy the uh, rest of your life. Oh, by the way, you inhale 44 pounds of dust in your lifetime, too. But your lungs immune system clears that up for you. There's one other, one other thing there. That's it. Oh yeah. So back to taking care of um, of your lungs. You got to see this stuff, and everything you're covering over the next couple of weeks is going to come up. 20 million kids, 16 million adults have asthma. Pneumonia kills 44,000 people a year, and you're going to cover all the microbiology that fills that uh, up there with us. Lung cancer, more cancer killer, more, more people killed with lung cancer than breast, colon, prostate, uh, pancreas, all combined. You know, over 100,000 uh, in 2009 uh, alone. And then anonymous patient, anonymous pulmonary physician, 
You see the oxygen tank here? Again, still, from, still quality of life from people. 7 million people in the U.S., 700,000 emissions a year. A lot of these folks are going to be uh, on your work team next year and you're going to uh, take care of them. Plus, 1 in 10 people have uh, sleep apnea or some sleep disorder, res sleep related respiratory problem. Ooh, oh shoot. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, no recording devices. I guess it's cast out of the bag. The, um, there is a prototype. Remember your security clearance, too. The module has an experimental prototype designed to give you just a glimpse, just a second, of your future. And it crashes a lot. It might not work today, but side effects include some nausea, headache, occasional incontinence. <laughs> but I think if we can try it out, we can try it again. I apologize if it doesn't work. Okay. Um, we're going to jump to 2084 summertime around lunch. Like I said, it might not work. Brace yourselves. Nothing to do.